Hey guys, welcome to another video. We're going to be going through the topic of energy, work and power in this video. And here are the subtopics of the topic and we'll aim to go through most of these today. So energy is simply the ability to do work in an object and we're going to go through the concept of work towards the end stage of this video but essentially energy is what causes things to happen right in the real world and so the main things that we have to be aware of is that energy is always conserved and now you've got various different forms of energy like gravitational potential energy which is to do with the energy gained by an object that's moved away from the Earth's surface. You've got kinetic energy, which is energy um, of an object that's as a result of its movement. And, you know, all, you've got all these other things. Thermal energy, that's a big one. Heat energy. Um, so, you know, you've got all these different forms. The main thing here is that energy isn't ever created or destroyed. It's just transferred between one form to another. And we'll be looking a lot, looking at a lot of examples about this, and it's very important for you to understand this for when you do calculations and your examinations. But so, let's take a look at a few examples of how this might happen. In a light bulb, electrical energy is simply transformed into heat energy and light energy. In a waterfall, the gravitational energy of the water that's high above the ground is transformed into kinetic energy, and this specific example of a waterfall is what we'll be using uh, to do some calculations in the next few slides. Uh, in a battery, you have chemical energy that is transformed into electrical energy. So kinetic energy is simply the energy of a moving object. And how do we calculate kinetic energy? Well, you've got the formula Ke equals half times mass times velocity squared. Okay, and so the unit for any form of energy is just joules, okay? So you've got half, you've got mass, which is obviously in kgs, and you've got velocity, which is obviously in meters per second. And so when you've got these values, then you know you can calculate kinetic energy. And let's take a look at this example on the right-hand side here, which is a very common example that you'll find in your examination. So. A uh, lorry of mass 4,000 kgs is traveling at a speed of 4 meters per second. A car has a mass of 1,000 kgs. The kinetic energy of the car is equal to the kinetic energy of the lorry. What is the speed of the car? Well, we know that the kinetic energy of both cars is at what? Um, we don't know that actually, but we know that they're the same. So, okay, if kinetic energy of the lorry equals the kinetic energy of the car, what that means is one half times the mass of the lorry times the speed of the lorry squared is equal to half times the mass of the car times the speed of the car. So if you were to simplify that, you've got some um, 2000 times 16 equals half times 1000, so that's actually 500, times velocity squared. And let me just get the calculator here. So 2,000 times 16 is 32,000. And if you want to get rid of the 500 on the right hand side there, well you've got to divide 32,000 by 500 where you get 64. And finally if you want to get V on itself, which is the speed of the car, 64 divided by, well 64 square root of that is going to be 8. And so therefore, the answer is 8. So hopefully that makes sense. And so for any object that you have the mass and the velocity, 
then by using this formula here you can calculate the uh, kinetic energy of any object okay so that's a very useful formula that you'll need to know and again it's always in joules uh, gravitational potential energy is also extremely important and how you calculate that is mass times gravity times the change in height okay so the mass again is in kgs uh, gravitational force uh, at least on earth is 10 meters uh, per second per second and you've got the change in the height which is you know how far up are you from ground level pretty much uh, so let's take a look at how this might work um, a car of mass 800 kgs travels over a height of h which is this height here uh, but traveling to the top of the hill the car gains 40,000 joules of gravitational potential energy. The gravitational field strength is 10 newton per kg. So what is the height of the hill? Uh, let's first of all write down the formula and put down the things that we do know. Well, we know that it gains 40,000 gravitational potential energy. We know that it's 800 kgs. We know that the gravitational strength is 10 but we don't know the height and that's what we're trying to figure out okay so what you have to do then is just rearrange the formula do the calculation so 40,000 is equal to 8,000 times change in height so if you were to get rid of the 8,000 on the right hand side you divide that um, on the left hand side and what you'll get is 5 uh, being 5 meters, being the height of the hill. Okay, so that's how you calculate that. So, energy resources. Well, there are many different ways that we can get the energy that we want. Uh, you know, a prime example of that would be, you know, how do we get cars to run? Well, we need cars on the road for transport. You know, how, how are we going to get that kinetic energy? Well, we use fuel and fuel is a form of chemical energy that we use uh, by we, when we burn it what it uh, turns into is heat energy and so the heat energy then turns into kinetic energy uh, in the form of you know turbines and things of that nature so that's one way we can gain uh, kinetic energy but you know there's all these other things uh, like you know getting electric electric energy with uh, you know hydroelectric dams and things of that nature so there's a few things here that we don't really have the time to go through but you can have a read through it you can also look that up on my website I've got the same uh, all the notes there for you to have a look at so just have a read through that so work well what is work work done is just simply put the amount of energy that's transferred uh, in an object and so how you calculate that is relatively easy all you have to do is force times the distance that uh, the object is moved in any particular direction um, so if you had like uh, let's just say a little box here and there's a force of let's say 10 newtons going to the right and let's just say that um, the distance that the box moved was 0.5 meters then if you wanted to calculate the work done on this object it's really just simply 10 times 0 0.5 which leads you to 5 joules um, and that's pretty much work which is also the energy transferred or change in energy okay so they're all the same thing and the concept of work is important to consider when we consider what power is which is basically the power is the rate of energy transfer where you know that the energy transfer or the you know change in energy that's work right uh, so the rate at which that happens, the rate at which work is done, that is power. And power is calculated in watts. Uh, so using that same example of that box of 
was it 10 newtons that we had before? Yeah, okay, it was 10 newtons. So 0.5 meters have moved and the force was 10 newtons. Let's just say that uh, this happened over a period of five seconds. So what you can do now is calculate the power by going, okay, well, what is the change in energy? Well, change in energy or work is force times distance, which is 10 times 5, 0.5, so you get five joules. Now, what is the power? Um, well, power is the change in energy over the time period. So, you know, it's five joules divided by five seconds because, you know, that's what we're assuming. So power is going to be one watt, okay? One watt. So hopefully, hopefully that, that makes sense. So before we finish up, I thought I'd go through this quick example here with you just to get you familiar with this type of questions they might ask you. So they give you a waterfall, okay? Just remember the water up here has gravitational potential energy. As it falls down, it gains kinetic energy. And the reason for that is because the gravitational potential energy is being converted to kinetic energy. And the concept here is that the as the object loses gravitational energy, it gains the same amount of kinetic energy. That's the conservation of energy, where one form simply just, you know, gets uh, transformed to another. So the main energy transfer that's taking a waterfall is gravitational to kinetic. So the speed of the water as it hits the bottom is 21 meters per second. Calculate the height of the waterfall. Um, so the concept here is going to be loss of gravitational potential energy is equal to the gain of kinetic energy. And we know we can calculate kinetic energy because it's half times mass times velocity squared. And we know we can calculate the gravitational potential energy because it's uh, gravity times mass times change in height. Okay? Now, if we were to take a look at this, we know that gravity is 10. So 10 times mass times change in height equals half times mass times, we know what the velocity is, which is 21 and we're going to square that. Now, what's interesting here is that you, well, we don't know what the mass of the water is, but quite frankly, we don't need to know because it cancels each other out, okay? So we can cancel out the mass. So what you now have is 10 times the change in height is equal to half times 21 squared. And so, finally, change in height is half times 21 squared divided by 10. And so if you do that, I'm going to grab my calculator. Then what you get is a height of 22.05 meters. Okay, so, you know, that's one way that um, they'll ask you questions about this stuff. So, you know, just make sure that you're doing a lot of practice on these because it's quite easy to screw up if you're not thinking right. But um, it's uh, you know relatively straightforward if you if you if you practice. So, so thank you for watching, guys. Uh, for any extra resources, consider just uh, subscribing to my Patreon channel. I've got a lot of other stuff, uh, specifically with you know Cambridge IGCSE Biology and Chemistry. I will be uploading physics stuff at some point, but at the moment I do have topic based. Uh, past paper uh, MCQ questions and some other stuff there so check that out and you've got the free resource uh, free exam Academy which is just my website where I've uploaded a lot of notes that may be very helpful for your examination prep so thank you very much and I will see you in the next video